So what exactly are mitochondria? Short answer? All right, say it with me. On three, one, two, three. Powerhouse, Powerhouse of, of the, the cell. cell. So, yes, very good. You all remember the definition that for some reason has been collectively ingrained into our subconscious. But unlike a lot of scientific rhetoric we might remember from pop culture or totally legit Facebook pages, this bit is true. It's not something that's falsely quoted or retweeted. Mitochondria allow the crap you eat to be effectively converted into energy that is then usable by your body's cells. Okay, I feel like I should clarify something. When I say crap, I don't mean like garbage, I mean like the Crunchwrap Supreme from Taco Bell. Mitochondria only cares if it's sustenance. Just please don't eat pennies or plastic is all I'm saying. Long answer? While accurate, the phrase powerhouse of the cell really only scratches the surface of what they are and how they came to be in the first place. Mitochondria are parts of the cell that are called organelles, and are meant to perform a specialized purpose. Kind of like organs in our body, just on a much smaller scale. And at least in human cells, there aren't just one or two of them like you might see in a cell diagram. There are in fact anywhere from hundreds to thousands per, depending on the type of cell. The only exception being red blood cells, which have none, but they're kind of a special case altogether. In all the rest, mitochondria are hard at work, day and night, breaking down glucose into ATP, which is the energy that powers all of your cells and keeps you tethered to this mortal realm. But this is probably stuff you've already heard before. I could go absurdly in-depth talking about the enzyme ATP synthase and how it does the dirty work within the mitochondrial matrix, plus how transport proteins are involved in that process, or why there's a pH difference between the outside and inside of the mitochondria, and many other less significant roles performed by the organelle, including programmed cell death, steroid synthesis, metabolic regulation within the cell, and all that minutia. But this is short answer, long answer, not short answer, absurdly long college lecture answer. So instead, I'll discuss what is the most widely accepted origin of the mitochondria. And that's something called the endosymbiotic theory. Essentially, what it means is that mitochondria did not just originate through some mutation or natural process within our cells. Instead, way back in the day, just a couple billion years ago, a single cell organism that could use oxygen to make fuel was engulfed by a larger cell, but instead of being used for food, the two entered into wholly symbiotic matrimony. The larger cell provided protection and survival for the smaller one, and in turn gained a new source of energy. It'd be like if you woke up one night to find a homeless person randomly in your house, but instead of calling the police, you offered to shelter and then help them. They then decide to open a startup in your garage, just roll with it, and give you stock options early on. And then their business takes off and it becomes a huge success. It's not, it's not a perfect analogy, but you get the idea. In the end, both parties end up benefiting. And this theory is supported by the fact that mitochondria actually have their own unique DNA, separate to yours, and even replicate on their own. It really is interesting, so if you're curious and want to learn more, I'll leave some links down below. But it's safe to say that without this chance encounter a few billion years ago, life on Earth right now might look a whole lot different. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Short Answer Long Answer. I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this one. You can always leave your suggestions down below or on Twitter, and feel free to check out other videos either from my On Geek or Short Answer Long Answer series. Stay smart, and I'll see you guys next week.